you know, I'm not great at my job. I'm okay. There's some nights I'm good at my job. Some nights I'm not as good as my job, as or as good as I need to be for my job. Um, I'm not perfect. I don't believe any human is. Uh, well, as the Human League said, I'm only human of flesh and blood. I'm made. I'm only human. I'm born to make mistakes. And that's fine. But Homeboy had one job. Whether, uh, whether you are of the mind that it uh, was real or some sort of extravagant plot, uh, Homeboy had one job and he fucked it up and uh, it was simultaneously the most hilarious and uh, disappointing thing to happen because some people deserve to die and when you uh, spew that hate out into the world and to your people and you spend your whole life and your whole uh, platform telling others that they deserve to die and not protecting people when not protecting innocent people when they are in the face of death guess what people are going to want you to fucking die too some people deserve to die he's one of them Welcome to Broke on Records. This is uh, my favorite pieces in my collection, A to Z. Uh, bands, bands starting with A, bands starting with Z. This is a thread uh, from Mr. Hoffamy, Brandon, and I'm here to jump on it because I didn't have a good video idea this week. I'm, I'm kind of blitzed right now. I. Uh, uh, I'm filming this uh, on a uh, fairly early, early for me, Sunday morning, uh, the day before the video is going to be released. Uh, I am just a couple hours away from attending uh, the Pitchfork Music Festival in Chicago, which I have uh, not really been to in like 10 years. Uh, I went about five years ago to literally see one band and, and leave. Um, but I haven't actually hung out at the festival in, in about 10 years, so I'm excited. Uh, on Friday, I spent the day at the Rumble, which is the uh, yearly Chicago Hardcore Fest uh, that did a number on me, certainly. And now we're here. Now, I gotta talk about almost 30 records, uh, and we're three minutes in the video, so um, I'll keep this short and sweet. But essentially, not my favorite albums necessarily, although some of these are, but my favorite pieces, the 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 pieces of vinyl that mean the most to me in my collection per letter of artist. Uh, I'm following in Brandon's footsteps a little bit. I'm including uh, a number band and I'm including my favorite compilation at the end. So I'll try to move through these. A lot of these, you guys are not gonna be shocked <laughs> about, but, but some of these I haven't talked about in a minute or uh, maybe you have not seen me talk about it at all. So uh, for the numbers, I went with this record right here, this is a band called 411. This is the side you cannot see, the complete discography, 1992, 1992. Uh, 411 is a kick-ass uh, melodic hardcore band from the 90s. Uh, they've got some great uh, political material on this record um, and just really catchy stuff. It's It, it, it leans into post-hardcore because they do just like melodies so well and riffs so well, but the lyrics are great. Such a tight catalog, one of the most underrated bands of this type uh, of 90s hardcore. Um, really, really good. I've had this forever. Um, you can find the originals of, of these records, and th th they're not the most expensive hardcore records in the world, uh, but it's nice to have all their songs on one album. Uh, for the letter A, um, I, I, just showed, <laughs> I just showed this recently, um, and there was something else that was kind of going up against this, but at the end of the day, it's just 
my favorite, and it's the best. The Aesop Rock Nutshell Pass, finally, please. Beautiful, gorgeous reissue of my favorite rap record of all time and one of my favorite albums of all time in, in any genre. Uh, it's just so well put together. It sounds amazing. This record means the world to me. All of Aesop's stuff does. I could have picked a number of Aesop Rock records um, and a couple other things that were up against it as well. But that was, you know, it's one of these things I can't labor over too much or else I'll go fucking insane. Uh, for B, um, I, it, a couple of things considering, uh, a lot of my blacklisted records are really important to me because a lot of them were given to me by the band, which is huge. Um, I have a beautiful first pressing of Blue Nile Walk Across the Rooftops, um, that almost made it, uh, but for me, again, we're talking about sentimentality and the records that mean the most to me, uh, and going with, uh, Billy Talent, one of my all-time favorite bands, Canadian pop punk and post-hardcore group. Uh, I pulled two because it's my favorite, but the entire Music on Vinyl reissue campaign of Billy Talent that they did a number of years ago was so crucial for me. It is one of, if not the only, reissue campaign I bought every single album for. Um, it was nice, too, because they didn't come out all at once. They were rolling them out every, like, three to five weeks or so, so I was able to kind of pace out the purchasing of all of them so I didn't have to, like drop a shit ton of money all at once, uh, which is the way to do it. If you're going to do a reissue campaign, that's the way to, uh, to do it. But yeah, I mean, the packaging on this record is amazing. The packaging on all of them is amazing. The way that they got these 2000s punk CDs to sound really good on vinyl is awesome. Uh, and just stoked that these exist. Uh, now, letter C is actually something I've just gotten. I haven't shown it on camera, and I didn't put it on the floor because it's a beast, but I will show it very briefly. And this is something that will probably be my reissue of the year. I haven't even listened to this thing yet, but uh, I traded a bunch of records to be able to get this because I was certain I was not going to be able to get it. And this is the massive fucking workout <laughs> of the Charles Bronson Youth Zack box. Yeah, Charles Bronson was a uh, uh, crucially important uh, a punk, at hardcore, and power balance band from DeKalb, Illinois, back in the day. Um, this is the super deluxe edition of their uh, classic uh, LP, Youth Attack. Uh, this is a three LP set. It's got the original album. It's got a remix version of the album, and then demos, lives, outtakes, uh, your typical box at fair, plus a super thick coffee table book. And uh, I'm just, I, I haven't, as excited as I was to get this, I just haven't had the time to to dig into it because I really want to make sure I give it my full attention, but uh, yeah, I mean, when it came to the C records, as far as things with the most meaning to me, again, I mean, this band is so important. You guys know how much I love hardcore, you guys know how much I love Chicago music history. Um, this is a true document and testament of both of those things, so really just thrilled that I was able to get a copy because, like I said, I, it sold out online so fast I didn't think I was going to be able to get one in stores. Uh, for D, th it's been on my mind because I just played it the other day, um, so that might be contributing to it, but again, when I'm thinking about sentimentality, value for the record, importance of the record, uh, Brandon mentioned Grail status as well. This is absolutely part of it, uh, and that is my OG Dio Holy Diver. Uh, that I got for 50 cents. <laughs> um, not mint, but a pretty damn good play copy. Uh, you know, I mean, the cover looks mighty, mighty clean. There's a couple creases and things. Um, has the inner sleeve. Might be split on one side, I think. And the record plays, you know, VG with some surface noise, but I think, I, I think really what this was was a mistake. <laughs> uh, I think, actually, I think the store saw just looked at the vinyl, saw the surface marks on the vinyl, assumed it was warped, and just threw it in a bin with a bunch of records. I, I've seen this happen a few times at record stores where there might be a rock-solid collection of shit, but they just don't want to take the time to price it all. So uh, if it's in, you know, anything less than VG++ condition, they'll just throw it in a fucking bin and make everything whatever, 50 cents, a buck, five bucks, two bucks, whatever it is. Uh, it's happened to me a few times, and I've been able to luck out and reap the benefits. Uh, this was not the only record from that haul. Uh, there were some really, really good ones in addition to that. 
uh, for E. Uh, just talked about this record in my uh, favorite albums by my favorite bands video, but I don't think I actually showed this version. Uh, this first pressing Earth, Bees Made Honey in the Lion's Gold. This is the Bible Back edition, uh, and is the first pressing of the Bible Black Bible Back edition. Um, you may see these with a brown kind of faux leather casing. Uh, that's the second pressing, if you're curious. But this is the first pressing, uh, black casing, black vinyl. Um, one of the only records in my entire collection that I don't play. I have a separate play copy, uh, so I can keep this kind of just as a totem for being one of my favorite albums of all time, one of my favorite album packagings of all time. Um, but I ended up buying the uh, reissue later that just comes in a standard gatefold, so I play that. Got the, this one for display. F, uh, there were a number of things, and then literally, I think this is the, according to my discogs, the last F in my collection. My last F to give. Uh, Future of the Left travels with myself and another Welsh post-hardcore punk rock band. Uh, if you're familiar with McCluskey, this is the band that follows McCluskey um, uh, with Andy Falcus. Um, I, this record is huge for me when I was way more into playing bass than I currently am. I learned how to play most of this record on the bass guitar because uh, the bass riffs on this record are amazing. Uh, unfortunately, I will say I played this semi recently and this pressing sonically does not really hold up, but these albums have never been reissued. They're very, very hard to get now. Um, I bought this at Generation Records the only time I ever went to New York City. Um, bought this and uh, I wish I had the foresight all those years ago to get Curses on vinyl, the first Future of the Left album, because that one is also very hard to find. Andy Falcus at one point seemed to suggest that there were reissues in the works, but I don't know if that's true. Um, but yeah, I just, I can't get, I can't get rid of this because you just can't find it on vinyl. But most of the time I'm streaming this and not playing this record because like, unfortunately it just doesn't hold up. Uh, which is the same case for my G record because of the way this record is packaged, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, this is Glass Jaws Worship and Tribute. First pressing of this album, uh, it comes in this PVC sleeve, and oftentimes when, uh, you know, albums that have been around for many, many years and PVC sleeves that have never been taken out, uh, they get either sun damage or packaging damage from the PVC that, co that coats the vinyl. Uh, so I got this for dirt cheap, from uh, a record store here that I was trading a bunch of stuff to. And I kind of used the condition to be like, look, I almost will never play this. I kind of just really want it. Uh, side B plays perfect. Side A, a little bit more surface noise. I mean, you can clean it, but once that kind of sun damage sets in there, as I'm sure many of you know, not, not much to be saved, but just a really cool piece. Um, Brooklyn, I believe Brooklyn, if not Brooklyn, New York, uh, post-hardcore, emo, whatever. Uh, and speaking of New York, my H is Holy Ghost, self-titled album. Uh, one of my favorite records of all time. <laughs> I, just, I keep saying that. Uh, it's, uh, it's just so fucking good. Uh, Holy Ghost, I consider them to be the modern Pet Shop Boys. Uh, they're kind of sporadically active these days, but this debut album is fucking amazing. It is just a perfect kind of synth-pop throwback record. Uh, they've had a few albums since then. They are also very good, but this one is, is top-notch for me. Um, it was my album of the year, the year it came out, in 2011. And it's just really good. Uh, for I, I didn't even have to think about these. This, these were the first albums that came to mind when I even had the thought to do this video. Uh, and I'm going to show two, but they clearly go together, and you know what I mean. And that is my first U.S. Harvest Pressings of Iron Maiden and Killers. Uh, my favorite Iron Maiden albums, uh, I have said for years, and I think it still holds true, more than any of my R.E.M. records, more than my Kiss records, more than my Earth records, more than my Neil Young, my Frank Zappa, my whatever. Uh, if there's a worst case scenario where I only get to save two records in my collection, it's it's these. Because I know I will never find them in this condition for the price that I got them at. 
Got these way, way back in the day for 12 bucks a piece, about three or four years apart from each other. Um, I found this one first and then was kind of waiting and waiting and waiting to get this one. This was purchased at uh, Hipcat Records, which is my old local stop, and this was at uh, Acme Records in Milwaukee one year. We went up there for Summerfest. Uh, yeah, just the meaning that these records have to me are huge. I very rarely play them because I want them to kind of stay in the condition that they're in, but every once in a while I break them out. Uh, obviously I love the Bruce stuff just as much as anybody else, but those Deano records are, are the ones for me. I apologize. I guess I could just start the site over. Who cares? Um, like, there's no music playing, but there could be. Now, uh, Brandon opted to not show any signed vinyl because he thought it was cheating. And I don't disagree with the notion, but when I was looking through my J's, it was really hard to not show anything that wasn't <laughs> this record. Uh, and that's Jawbreaker, Dear You. Um, talked about this many times on my channel. Record truly changed my life. And uh, before Jawbreaker reunited, I got to see Blake Schwarzenbach uh, his solo project called Forgetters at uh, Beat Kitchen. It was a very small club in Chicago and got him to sign all over this crazy record. I know there's the glare there from the sleep, but this is not the one that I like rarely ever play because I just kind of keep it as is. Um, but yeah, obviously, because the music is so important to me, getting to meet Blake Schwarzenbach was so important to me. The fact that he scrub it all over the donkey was was important to me it's just hard not to say that one uh the letter k i almost pulled my kill switch engage records because when those got reissued those are huge because kill switch engage those two albums uh and a heartache as daylight dies particularly as daylight dies uh was one of the first kind of modern metal bands i ever got into so when those were reissued on vinyl from Run Out Groove, I was a thrilled. And those are huge, huge records for me that I'm so stoked to own on vinyl. But when it when we're talking about the most meaningful records or favorite, you know, top notch pieces in a collection, uh, it would be unwise for me not to show the KLF Chill Out. First press on Wax Tracks uh, that was VCLT'd to me by Ryan Dye, uh, the the killer in Vanilla. Um, just one of the most insane gifts I've ever received in my entire life. And uh, I, I feel like I'm still ramping myself up in a way to, to get him back for this. And I know he will watch this and he will say I do not need to, but I'm still thinking of something that will that will equate to that insane gift. Um, L, Life of Agony, River Runs Red. Uh, this was a record that when I bought it, I wasn't, like, I liked it and I knew what it was, but the record had not yet seeped into a very high meaning for me like it does now, and then I, I think I've told this story before, but I before I was dating and living with my current girlfriend, uh, I had a date with this girl who was really mean. And uh, I left and went to the record store and this was a, a like a Black Friday pressing that was left over in the record store that they had on clearance for half off and now it is very, very rare and expensive. <laughs> um, but is, you know, one of the most meaningful records to me of all time. Uh, for M, uh, I feel like there's something else I was going to pull for this, but again, in the context of the criteria, there's no way this couldn't have been what I chose. Uh, this is an album called Moon Colony Bloodbath. This is a collaborative and sort of split album between the Mountain Goats, a uh, notable band, and John Vanderslice, a very good singer-songwriter. Uh, I will keep this brief. In April of 2009, uh, I got to see the Mountain Goats for the very first time with John Vanderslice. They were doing a uh, solo tour, John playing solo, the other John playing solo, to promote this 12-inch uh, EP. This is the first pressing that's recently got reissued for its 15th anniversary. I opted not to buy it, although I guess I probably should have so I could have a play copy, but got this signed by John Vanderslice. This is the record that made me want to become a singer-songwriter all those years ago. Um, it is 
extremely, extremely important to me. This is another one I rarely play just because it means too much. Um, I just let it be there and be valuable to me. And New Order, Lil Life, Rice Paper, Obi. Uh, I, there's some yellowing in the Rice Paper, Obi, but I mean, this could be a mid minus copy otherwise. Uh, and I got this for 10 bucks uh, at a little store called Trax in Bloomington, Indiana, and was fucking floored when I <laughs> when I saw this. Could not believe it. Uh, my favorite New Order record, top copy, can't be beat. Uh, for O, it's on my mind because I just saw these guys. Unfortunately, it wasn't the best show in the world uh, for my taste. But uh, again, in context of the category, I'm going to talk about Off, the self-titled album. Um, they're playing their final shows. They played one in Chicago. It was not really my speed because they played the entire new album, which I'm not crazy about. Uh, and the vibe at the show was just not a good vibe. Uh, but that does not change the fact that first four EPs and self-titled rocked my fucking world. They still do. This is the first pressing. Got to can't can't be beat. Uh, L M N O P. Could show us a number of things, but uh, had to go with this. Uh, a porcupine, the Sybil EP. Friends and family only press. My number six out of twenty. Uh, I try to talk about this band on, on camera whenever I can because one, they're homies, and two, they fucking rock. Uh, they just put out their new album, All Is Vapor. It's amazing if you like blackened, evil, dark, metallic, hardcore music. Uh, they are extremely good at what they do. Um, and I have been just back-end supporter of Porcupine since I met those dudes. And they were kind enough to give me one of these limited uh, screen print presses of the album, which is amazing. So that had to be it. Uh, for letter Q, Q and not U, this album's called No Kill No Beat Beat, released in 2000 on the Discord Records label. This is a first uh, Euro press that I got for like two bucks at Reckless one time. Uh, sounds great. If you like things like the Dismemberment Plan, uh, if you like the sort of uh, more angular side of a band like Pavement, um, Drive Like Jehu, uh, Q and I, you not as like heavy as Drive Like Jehu gets sometimes, but just great kind of math rock, emo adjacent stuff. Fans of Captain Jazz might be into this, uh, but incredible, incredible post hardcore uh, alternative, whatever you want to call it, record. For R. Uh, this is Chuck Reagan with Feast or Famine. Um, this is another record that was crucial in uh, me wanting to become a songwriter, particularly the song for Broken Ears. Um, I had that on a Asian Man Records comp, and uh, that was one of the earliest times I remember hearing like a singer-songwriter type of track, and it really blew me away. Um, so I was able to get this on vinyl at Indie CD and Vinyl, the first time I ever went there in Indianapolis. It's still one of my favorite stores in the Midwest. Um, and I will say the record that came after this Gold Country, I probably like a little more track for track. And my pressing of Gold Country is very sentimental to me as well. But um, I, I had to show this one just because this was the first one that really cemented Chuck Reagan into my conscience. If you're not familiar with Chuck Reagan, uh, one of the principal singers and songwriters of the band hot water music, uh, but his solo stuff came my way long before hot water music did. S. I forgot to pull T, but I know what T is. Sisters of Mercy, Floodland. Beautiful OG on uh, trans the translucent audiophile Indianapolis pressing. Um, just don't know what else I'm going to say about the Sisters of Mercy other than they're fucking legendary. Floodland is a legendary record. Played this not too long ago. Still sounds amazing. I want to say that was a secondhand tunes find if, uh, for the Chicago people watching. Uh, R.I.P. Secondhand Tunes. Great, great little store. Um, anyway, T is uh, another one I showed in my favorite albums by my favorite bands video. But it is uh, obviously the The with Dusk. Um, still to this day the single album I've ever paid the most for which is still under a hundred bucks I'm not 
afraid to say that because I know people have spent more. But yeah, I've never spent over a hundred bucks on a single album. Uh, haven't even spent a hundred bucks on a single album. Uh, I think after shipping, I paid like eighty five for this off of Discogs. Um, and yeah, that is still the most to this day for one single record. Now, obviously, I've got expensive albums that I've used trade credit for and, th and things like that. But when I'm talking out of pocket, still the highest uh, at eighty five bucks, and I think that's pretty good. Uh, this is uh, the Dogs of Lust seven inch. This was another VCLT from Where I Die, and then I found this cool Love is Stronger Than Death promo seven inch at uh, Half Price Books, I think. But yeah. Uh, for you, I don't have it to show. I obviously, as you could probably imagine, I don't have a ton of you records. Uh, but my answer absolutely would be you two songs of experience. Um, the blue box set version, that record, uh, when it came out was just like, it's a record I probably need to revisit. It, it was released at a time that I didn't realize how much I needed it. And it, uh, helped me through uh, one of the most difficult times of my life uh i would say in the top five and the somewhere else in the top five is currently so uh i should be revisiting that record uh v violent femmes the blind leading to the naked my favorite violent femmes record and this is the same exact copy i've had for over 15 years um, that I got for a dollar at my local record store, Hipcat Records, back in Wilmette, Illinois. Um, so, it's got the historic personal value to me. It's got the musical value of being my favorite record by an amazing, amazing band. I won't uh, divulge that much. Uh, w, this was the only, only letter in the whole run that, like, nothing really stuck out to me as being like, oh, this is absolutely the answer. Um, I have a Weezer Blue album. Uh, obviously, that that album means a lot to me, but the pressing is... It's just a Target pressing, so it's whatever. Uh, the Wipers, Youth of America. Again, musically, the record's really important to me. The pressing is a record store day pressing. It's a great pressing, but it doesn't, you know, hold a lot of, like, internal value to me. Um, so out of the W's, this is pr probably the, the one that is the most meaningful. Uh, this is a band called Weekend. Not The Weekend, pop singer, but Weekend, uh, post-punk, alternative rock, indie rock band. Very sporadically active these days. This is their second full-length LP called Jinx. Um, I think the reason this means so much to me is because Weekend has kind of a cult fan base at this point because they're so sporadically active. Um, not a lot of people remember this band, so when I talk about this band to people and they know about it, I get really excited because they were a fucking kick-ass band. Um, got to see them once. They don't play Chicago very often, so getting to see them in Chicago was amazing. And the band opening for them was the band Nothing, who is obviously a huge, huge, you know, big alternative and shoegaze band now. So getting to see Nothing really early on at that show was very special to me. But the vinyl, this is one of my favorite color vinyl in my collection. That beautiful neon green white splatter. It's cut at 45 RPM, so it sounds amazing. I really want to fucking listen to this record now. I think I'm going to put it on as soon as this video's over. Um, yeah, just a brilliant, brilliant record. Um, yeah, I feel like you're post-punk and shoegaze. There it is. Apologize, this video is very long. I'm trying to wrap it before the 30 mark. Three letters left. X, Los Angeles, first pressing. Uh, I believe this was in my top three finds of 2023. So I talked about it recently. One of the most perfect albums of all time. We'll keep it, keep it at that. Y, Neil Young. Um, obviously, you know, Neil Young, Frank Zappa, those are going to be my, my Y and Z, but I was intentional about what I chose. Zuma is my favorite Neil Young record, but I picked this on the beach because one, I got it for 30 bucks, which is the cheapest I've ever seen on the beach in a store. Um, two, it's in great shape. Uh, three, I bought it in Indianapolis, once again at Indie CD and Vinyl, when I drove out to Farm Aid last year to see Neil Young. Uh, and despite him only playing four songs, and I was a little disappointed, uh, I feel grateful to have at least seen him because uh, as we all know, his Chicago show with Crazy Horse was canceled and uh we don't know if it's going to be rescheduled so 
It's the only time I get to see Lou Young. I have to be appreciative about it. And I was able to get on the beach right after that show. Uh, letter Z for Frank Zappa uh, is Roxy Elsewhere. This is the album that converted me into a Frank Zappa fan. Found this really good condition copy. I mean, yeah, it's got ringwear, but for me, finding a copy in this condition for 15 bucks at a store that I used to live down the street from was like a no fucking brainer. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely this one. And then I also chose a compilation and uh, the Spawn soundtrack from Records Today could have taken the cake, but I really got to go with this one. Um, the brand new YO compilation from Coleman Razor. Um, this was released way, way back, 2010. So almost 15 years of this, but uh, Anthony Fantano reviewed this record and it was my introduction to Afrobeat and, and Zamrock and that whole kind of underground African music scene that kind of became the sort of hipster followed thing. Uh, this was where it started for me. And uh, this is a great compilation of all that stuff. That is it.